Okay, this is uh, the 22nd uh, annual pruning demonstration in winter care for the Sacramento area. And this is sponsored by the Sierra Foothills Rose Society. And uh, we've been doing it for 22 years. Uh, this is a different uh, year because of the pandemic, uh, but uh, we hope that uh, we show you the principles of uh, rose pruning and winter care for the Sacramento area. Uh, what we're gonna do in this uh, uh, PowerPoint is I'm going to show you the tools uh, that you can use, or we can talk about the tools that you can use. Um, why you prune in your roses, the principles of pruning, the pruning process, the insects and diseases to watch out for, and whether you want to spray or not, and then some follow-up tips. The best time to uh, prune in the Sacramento area is from mid-December to mid-February. And generally, uh, I wait until the, green, the leaves uh, turn yellow uh, they start falling down by themselves. This uh, show, tells you that the roses are going to senescence and they're ready for pruning. So why do you prune? You prune to uh, remove uh, unproductive growth uh, such as uh, old damage, uh, disease, uh, dead wood, as well as twiggy growth. Um, you try to uh, encourage uh, new basal growth from the around the bud union. Um, and then you want to shape your roses and this is why you prune. Now in colder areas, uh, such as the East Coast and the North, uh, north areas like in Washington, uh, 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 Minnesota and all those areas, uh, all those areas are under snow right now. They're, uh, they uh, start pruning the roses in, uh, in March and basically their uh, target is to remove the dead, uh, dead canes uh, from um, the winter weather. So what happens if we don't prune? Um, if we wait too long into uh, late December, uh, uh, February, uh, you risk the danger of, the, danger of uh, the buds breaking dormancy. If this happens, you're going to see a lot of fungal diseases, which may sicken the plant and, and uh, make the plants unproductive. The plants might look really ugly, too much disease, too many dead canes, uh, too much twiggy growth, which will produce very small blooms. Um, so what do, you, what do you need to start pruning in this, uh, in this area? First of all, you need a tetanus shot. Uh, tetanus shots are usually good for 10 years. Um, make sure that you know the last time you, uh, you had a tetanus shot and get a booster. Um, have a, a first aid kit uh, available nearby, just in case that you cut yourself. Uh, you're gonna need a sharp uh, slicing type, hand pruning shears or uh, pruners, uh, the, the kind that uh, cut like a scissor. You're gonna need some loppers, uh, you're gonna need a pruning saw, and these are used for cutting um, uh, larger canes or thicker canes. Uh, very important, you're going to have some good gloves. Goldskin gloves are the best gloves that we like to use uh, for pruning roses. The uh, canvas uh, gloves that are coated with nitrile uh, are good, but uh, they will not keep the, um, the thorns uh, uh, away. They just keeps your hands dry. Um, elbow uh, length uh, gauntlet uh, gloves uh, or, uh, or canvas sleeves uh, are good because they protect your hand, your arms. Also, you need a uh, can of Lysol spray disinfectant so you can um, disinfect your tools. Anyway, you need to protect yourself. And in this, case, in this slide, you can see that uh, Kay Jelton is uh, protected very well 
for the thorns, you can see that she's using long, uh, uh, long sleeves. Uh, uh, she also has uh, headgear, uh, glasses. Uh, the guy on the on the left hand side is not uh, is not well protected. You can see that he's only using his um, uh, gauntlet gloves. Uh, that's a no no for pruning roses. Uh, you should dress like uh, Kay Jelton, uh, several layers of clothing. Uh, pruning tips. The goal is to encourage new replacement canes from the bud union or the crown of the rose. Always start from the, your pruning from the, from, uh, the bud union or the crown and work, your, uh, and work up uh, one cane at a time. Remove all canes and leaves, uh, and leave new replacement canes. Okay, so this is an example of uh, some of the stuff that you need to remove. On the right hand side, you can see um, uh, the old wood that was produced in this uh, climbing rose, and this lateral that goes to the uh, to the to the left, that's new wood. And you can see the difference between new wood and old wood. The old wood bark is gray, rough, in, in, or split, or corky. And the prickles are gray or white. The new wood, on the other hand, are, is, uh, are uh, green, smooth, and the prickles are brownish. This is an uh, example of um, uh, new wood but you can see that they're different colors. Uh, the one on the uh, left-hand side is a little bit weathered. It's a little bit older. The one on the right is a new cane. Those are the type of canes that you need to leave when you're pruning your roses. Now, the pruning, the pruning should, um, should proceed above a outward pointing bud unless those, uh, the roses are too close to, um, to a walkway, then you prune to an inside bud. And this, uh, these pictures show uh, samples of the buds. And then you can see I angled these cuts. The first two slides on the right, on the left hand side are the right kind. You can see that I cut above healthy tissue. Uh, you can show, you can, uh, you can tell the healthy tissue because it's whitish. So the picture on the, on the right is a little bit too, uh, too acute. The angle is too acute and, and kind of goes below the bud. We discourage um, those, ki those kinds of cuts. So, so the bottom line is um, cut above the, the bud about a quarter of an inch to half an inch. Don't worry about the angle of the, of the cut. The angle is irrelevant. And um, you want to open the center of the bush. Uh, so like, um, like a bowl shaped um, uh, situation with the uh, canes going toward the outside. In this slide, uh, you can see um, the, ro the rose in the, in the um, left-hand side. It's kind of bushy. Whereas the one that I'm pruning on the right-hand side, you can see that I'm removing all the twiggy canes from the middle so that I can, so that there's good air circulation going in that bush. And you can see, here's the final product. Uh, I left uh, just the, uh, the newer canes and that bush will produce uh, a lot of bloom, just like the, the year before. Here are examples of, um, of another rose that I pruned. If you can say how many, uh, how many canes he had. That's too crowded. What I did is I, um, 
I cut some of those extra canes and then I shortened the, um, the, uh, the, the canes uh, to a desired height. How high you prune a cane is a matter of preference. These are miniature roses, so they're, I only prune them to a foot to 18 inches high. Now, whether you want to spray or not, that's a, that's a personal decision. Some people are, you know, they just kind of don't want to spray. Other people, they want to spray as soon as they see problems. If you see fungal diseases while you're pruning, it might be a good idea to spray with a, a general fungicide that will control some of those uh, diseases that you see. I'm going to show you some slides of some of the common diseases that you, you might be able to see in your garden as you do the pruning. Now for insects, the most common insects that you're going to see at this time of the year are scale insects and aphids. But there might be signs of other insects such as uh, spider mites. Now, if you see those, take, take note because uh, you need to use the right type of insecticide or uh, controlling those problems. Uh, for rose diseases, uh, we're going to cover uh, black spot, rose rust, powdery mildew, cankers, uh, botrytis, and bacteria crown gall. Uh, these, are, uh, these are pictures of powdery mildew on the stems as you, can, as you can encounter them while you're pruning. Uh, if you still have blooms, you might see um, powdery mildew in the peduncle or right below the, um, the bud or where the buds were produced and in some of the foliage, if you still have foliage that is green. But more, more likely, you're going to see powdery mildew spores and mycelium or the strands of the, of the fungus on the thorns or the prickles and in some of the stems, especially some of the twiggy stems or the, or the um, kind of greenish stems. Now, be aware of that because you might need to use the right fungicide for controlling the powdery mildew. This, uh, in this slide, you can see powdery mildew. Uh, uh, this is a, a bad infestation of powdery mildew. And if that's the case, you're going to see this in very susceptible varieties. So you might consider uh, uh, replacing the bush with a, with a uh, variety that is less resistant. I mean, it's more resistant to powdery mildew. Now the next disease is uh, black spot. This is very common in, um, especially in older varieties of roses. Uh, black spot, you can see that um, is uh, black. The spots are black. Um, and the, uh, the edges of the spots are kind of feathery. And this is a uh, superficial uh, fungus that grows on top of the leaves. This is uh, uh, the next disease is, is called uh, rose rust. And rose rust is characterized by pustules grown on the undersides of the leaves. Uh, the pustules is like uh, dust. Um, and uh, rust has several spore stages. The most common ones are the uh, orange ones that are produced during the growing season, and the black ones, which are uh, the, that have more resistant cell walls, and they en uh, enable the rust to um, overwinter. On top of the leaves, you will see uh, spots orange spots uh, on, on top of the leaves. And that's an indication that you have rose rust. And then if you turn the leaf over, you're going to see the dusty uh, material uh, caused by the, um, by the spores of the rust. A very common uh, fungus 
is called rose canker. And there are several uh, species of rose cankers, but they're all um, characterized by uh, damage, in, um, disease uh, tips of the canes. And then the rust, I mean, the, the fungus continues downward. And this is caused by, by uh, 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 injured canes or cut canes. And then you have humidity, and then you have the spores uh, uh, present. When you prune your roses for canker, you need to cut, cut down until you see. Now the next uh, disease is Botrytis fungus. This is a very common fungus in the fall months of the year. Uh, they, this uh, uh, fungus starts with spots on the petals and then those spots grow. The, the spores are like seeds. So they land on the, on the petal and then they just kind of grow into a colony of the fungus and they just kind of uh, continue growing and then the, the, the whole petal will be infected. And then pretty soon the whole bloom will be infected. Uh, when the, the whole bloom is infected, we call it uh, bloom rot. Uh, this is a very damaging uh, fungus. If you let it uh, continue, it will reinfect, it will infect your whole garden. So it's very important to take it out as soon as you can. The last disease that we're going to cover is bacteria crown gall. This is called by a bacteria that causes uh, uncontrolled growth uh, in the form of galls. And you can find the bacteria, uh, the bacteria galls on, on the crowns, on the roots, or in the area forms on the area stems of the rose, as you can see in these two slides. Uh, the one on the right is on the crown of the rose, and on the one on the left is a major cane just above the, um, the crown of the rose. Um, whenever I see a uh, crown gall in my garden, I discard the, uh, the whole rose bush and uh, I replace the, um, the, uh, as much of the, the soil uh, with, uh, with uh, a new uh, soil. Uh, basically, I go to a different part of the yard and then bring a wheelchair, um, a wheelbarrow full of soil, and then I use that to replace the, uh, the one that I, I got rid of. And then the bush goes right into a trash can. These are some of the chemicals that you can you can use um, for um, for controlling uh, some of your rose diseases. They're divided into con contact um, in, uh, fungicides and systemic fungicides. This is an example from um, that I took uh, that I took uh, from um, Green Acres uh, this morning. I was over there because I want to see what they had in stock. Pesticides uh, are taken off the shelves continuously. So you need to um, uh, be aware of this and uh, visit your, your uh, nearby uh, nursery and see what they have and consult with um, the nursery persons which might uh, give you some advice on the, on the type of diseases that you want to control. Uh, these are some of the systemic fungicides that I saw while I was at, um, at uh, 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 Green Acres in uh, Lowe's um, uh, uh, pesticide uh, shells. Um, a lot of people use uh, the uh, a product called Immunax, and uh, but the most common one is in is um, is the blue one, uh, called, uh, is from Bio Bio um, Advance, uh, and that's um, 
that's a product that you um, you can spray on the on the foliage, or you can um, drench on the soil. Some of the other ones uh, you can also just read the label, and you can the, the label will tell you how to apply it and how how often you should apply it. This all these uh, chemicals will control the um, the fungal diseases, not the bacterial diseases or other type of diseases caused by other organisms, such as viruses or nematodes or the like. Now, in the garden, the two most common uh, insects you're going to see are the aphids, and that you find those in, um, in roses or nearby bushes that have green foliage, especially new foliage. Uh, aphids love new foliage. And um, anyway, it's important that you, when you uh, finish pruning your roses, you remove all the foliage because it might harvest some of these pests that we've been discussing. The, the most important insect pests are the rose scales. And there are several types of rose scales. The three most common rose scales that we find in the area are rose scale. And as you can see on the left-hand side, rose scale also attacks um, uh, uh, blueberries. I mean, not blueberries, uh, blackberries and boysenberries. And, um, and those type of um, uh, uh, berry bushes. Um, the one on the right is a, um, is a stem, and it had a, a pregnant female. And as you can see, I removed the scale, you know, the cover, and inside, uh, inside I found a female with a lot of eggs on it. Those eggs will hatch in the spring, and then they will, they will uh, move maybe a millimeter or two, not too far but they can also be, be moved by uh, wind or by animals uh, uh, moving in the foliage, such as birds, uh, uh, hummingbirds and the like. Uh, uh, animals that, um, that visit those, um, those uh, roses. This is San Jose scale, also very common in some areas. And especially if you have fruit trees, because the primary host of uh, uh, San Jose scale is fruit trees. Um, and again, it can be moved by wind. The, the crawlers are, can be moved by wind or by uh, birds. Um, scale insects uh, can be controlled by uh, insecticidal soaps, oils, um, but you're going to be needing several applications. I personally recommend the oils on uh, maybe a three week uh, um, cycle. A friend of mine that had a huge infestation with uh, um, San Jose scale uh, had to apply uh, five applications of oil in the, um, in the spring months of the year in order to get rid of it. So it's a, uh, Persistence is the uh, is the bottom line here, and uh, these are more um, uh, insecticides you can find in the in the store. Uh, the first two are well, the first in the upper part you can see uh, those are insecticides that are specific for caterpillars, which you will be finding later on in the year, especially in March and April. You're going to find the uh, fruit tree leaf rollers. Uh, in the bottom, you're going to see the uh, products containing a, micro a microbial based pesticide called spinosad. And those can be used for uh, all insects. And of course, uh, they are systemic insecticides. Um, and we, I personally only recommend using these products uh, on the last resort. Um, if you're going to use them, it's best to apply them as a drench. And if, 
if you're going to use them as a spray, make sure you spray it in the evening when the, the bees are not visiting your roses because these are very toxic on bees and um, some of the pollinating insects. So to summarize, um, once you, once you uh, finish pruning, you need to go back through your garden and make sure that you remove all the leaves from your roses, uh, especially around the, the rose beds. Um, make sure that you don't have any uh, rose debris around the roses because those are harvesting diseases. Um, uh, go around your roses and make sure you don't have any weeds, especially like um, deeply rooted weeds like uh, Bermuda grass or oxalis, or heaven's uh, sake, uh, hopefully you don't have a uh, nut sage or um, uh, field vine weed or something like that. Um, for weeds, um, uh, we recommend using a pre-emergence herbicide uh, to control them. It's just like birth control for, for weeds. And um, later on, after, uh, after you prune, uh, after mid uh, February, uh, first of March, you can start uh, putting some uh, soil amendments in your rose garden. Um, and and um, you can use uh, granular fertilizers uh, or some of the other um, soil amendments as needed in your garden. Uh, but make sure you read the, pro the product label because um, sometimes you can burn the heck out of your roses if you apply them too deep, too, too heavily. And of course, the final thing that you need to do in your garden is to add lots and lots of mulch. Uh, choose a mulch, an organic mulch that you like to see. I like to add at least four inches of mulch around the rose beds, but I do not like to cover the bud union because the bud union needs to be free of mulch in order to produce a, a new, new growth. I'd like to thank you for uh, listening to my program. And uh, the last slide that I'd like to show you is, uh, this is the product that uh, I use in my garden, it's print. Um, and I'd like to end it with this slide. Uh, I usually use print at least a couple of times a year. Um, it, does, it doesn't, it lasts uh, at most uh, about three months. So you need to kind of be on top of the weeds. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.